guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pika and I do fragrance reviews. So, welcome back everybody. Hope you're all doing very, very well. Have a very exciting video as always. And that is a fragrance review around Oriana, which is the new Parfums de Mali release, which I'm very, very excited about. It's very hyped in the fragrance community at the moment for um, a lot of reasons, mainly because first of all, there's Parfums de Mali, and second of all, it's a new ladies fragrance in the niche world, so we always get very, very excited. And luckily, I do have a sample from PDM UK, which is basically Marcus, and he's the owner of Seasense. He was kind enough to send this to me, and luckily, this has made me able to do a review for you guys because I'm not a fan of blind buying or whatsoever, so you guys know this by now. And also, I really hope that you like the updo. I know that you guys said that you liked it in my last video, so I thought I would do a sleeked back version of it, so I hope I don't look too, too weird, just because it saves me time from having to wash my hair, let's be real. So, as you guys know, Oriana, which is right here, was released uh, pretty much a month ago now. Yeah, very, very recently. It is a fragrance by Parfums de Mali. The top notes include mandarin orange, bergamot, it also has orange blossom, black currant, um, chantilly cream, marshmallow, musk, you name it. So, overall, it's meant to be like a floral, musky fragrance. Now, I will tell you what I get in the opening. So in the opening, it's incredibly sweet. Almost, it is toothachingly sweet, let's be real. People say it's very reminiscent to Love Don't Be Shy, and I'm quite on the fence about it. I understand because Love Don't Be Shy has orange blossom and that real big sweetness, and I definitely get that in here. This is toothachingly sweet. Um, <laughs> it's very in your face in the very beginning. Luckily, the citruses give it a bit of a lift, calms it down a little bit, but what I will explain is that it does change quite drastically on my skin. I have no idea why, but literally after five, 10 minutes, which is where I have it here, it's just a completely different fragrance. The citruses go away, so the bergamot and mandarin aren't really there anymore. The citrus touch that is usually from the orange blossom isn't really there. It doesn't really have that fruitiness anymore. It kind of just settles as a, like a powdery white floral. It, there might be other flowers in here as well. Something, something soft and powdery and a little bit sunscreeny. Maybe some ylang-ylang mightn't be in here. You never know. Um, the black current still stays, and the way I can describe how the black current plays a role, it does have like a sour touch to it. So if you guys have ever tried maybe black current cordial, uh, which I'll put a picture up here if I can find one, it kind of has that effect to it alongside obviously the citruses at the top, those go away. You still get that black current vibe throughout the mid of this fragrance. Now Coming into the base, that's where things start to get a little bit more different. And now on my skin, I must admit that Ambrette takes, well, at least I smell Ambrette in here. I don't know whether there is Ambrette, but I can definitely pick it up because I have a love-hate relationship with Ambrette. Normally Ambrette is used to replicate musk. Real musk is derived from deer, as an actual deer musk. Um, so usually Ambra is made to give that same soft, damp kind of effect that musk gives. And I have to say that Ambra kind of ruins it for me, I won't lie to you. It really mellows out the fragrance, dampens it, makes it feel a little bit claustrophobic to me. At least that's what normally happens with Ambra in my case. Um, I have literally no idea why it plays havoc on my skin every single time I have Ambra but it just happens to do that. The sweetness is still definitely there. It definitely is still screaming and shouting in the background, but not so as sharp. So in the beginning, it's a bit like sweet shop sweet. Um, so once you go into a sweet shop and you're just hit with this aroma of sourness and sweetness, 
that's what I get in the beginning. More towards the base, you definitely get a bit of a marshmallowy. I wouldn't say leptonic, not leptonic or whatsoever, but quite creamy, sweet um, sweetness. Almost like marzipan, like a mellow sweetness that you get. No almond in here, by the way. I'm just trying to get you guys to imagine what I'm saying right now. So it does definitely have that strong, soft sweetness right towards the base. And as I said, that musk for me, it just, it's not the type of musk that I like, I must admit. I'm more of a white musk, more high-pitched kind of girl. I'm not so much into the mellow, darker musks. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a dark fragrance, but it just dampens everything. I quite liked in the beginning that it was so vibrant and lively. More towards the end, it just kind of Net, it kind of flattens out if you know what I mean. Um, maybe on you guys, it might be completely on your skin, completely different on your skin. For some reason, it just has that flat effect on my skin. Have no clue why. In terms of performance, I would say it definitely is a good performer. Um, it definitely has great longevity. Um, obviously, I don't have the full bottle, so I can't give you things like sillage because I don't know how it travels once I leave the room. Um, in terms of projection, I would say pretty good. I would say one to two hours arm's length, if that, um, which is still quite solid for this kind of category of fragrance. And overall, I would say definitely good performer. So overall, my two cents are is that I quite like the beginning, even though it's quite tooth achingly sweet, a bit too artificially sweet for my liking, then goes down into quite a mellow, um, mellow soft sweetness. Not, I wouldn't necessarily go powdery, I'd go more so musky than powdery on this one. And it's just, it's just not something that I enjoy, unfortunately. I was quite intrigued because I like a few of the Parfums de Mali. I own Asafanad, Asafanad? <laughs> I own Safnad. I'd like to own Cassili and Atalia. I like all three of those fragrances. And yeah, it's just a bit of a disappointment. I was kind of expecting something a little bit more elegant. Um, it doesn't really have a lot of elegance in my opinion. And that's a shame coming from a brand like Parfums de Mali. But it's all okay. I think most of you women will absolutely love it. As I said, maybe it just doesn't work on my skin. In terms of what occasion I'd wear this, I personally wouldn't wear this in the office just because of how sweet it is and that umbret note can kind of put some people off, I think. Um, it basically, if you're in close quarters, i.e. if you're in an elevator, it might put somebody off. But maybe because it is so sweet, it might do well in terms of compliments and because of the performance, it might have great compliments attached to it. You never know. So yeah, I, I would say I would give it, in my opinion, a six out of 10 for me. Uh, maybe some of you ladies might really like it. It's not full bottle worthy for me, unfortunately. I know um, lots of Fragcom ladies have been sent bottles and I think if I was sent a bottle it'd be a great maybe everyday fragrance-ish but because I would be spending my own money <laughs> at £200 worth of it I wouldn't necessarily buy it. So I hope that you guys really really enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, thumbs up, all of that jazz. Um, it really does help support my channel and hopefully in the future I'm really really hoping to stay more consistent. Upload a video every Sunday, fingers crossed, but we shall see. As you guys know I work at 9 till 5.30, it's quite an intense job as well so it's very hard fitting in YouTube as my hobby I must admit. So I hope you guys like this video and I shall catch you up in my next one. Bye guys!